Here we go. Keep going. All right. You're gonna have to pull up. If you need a dump trailer, but you don't want to buy one because they're super expensive, you could do what I did, which was make my own homemade dump trailer out of a lawnmower trailer. This is a trailer that came from like Northern Tool or Lowe's or something. I don't even know because I bought it secondhand for $500. It's a five by eight. It's very lightweight, but it can still haul about 1500 pounds. I paid $500 for the trailer, and I think I probably have $500 of other materials, including the steel and the wood box. I built all of it myself, so I call that a zero. If you had to pay somebody, you might have another $500 in it. So I think I have a total of about $1,000 in this trailer. It has served me so well for the amount of cost that I have into it that I don't know how I could replace it with anything else that is so usable and so affordable. and. The other benefits are you get lots of respect when you drive through town with the trailer looking like this. It turns a lot of heads and you get a lot of thumbs up at the dump when you crank that thing up and you see your trash dump in and you walk away fast and the other guys are still hand unloading. There are little lawnmower trailers that are exactly like the one that you have that you turned into a dump trailer. <laughs> I found that the best uses for this trailer are job site debris, like wood and lightweight things like boxes and you know trash that comes from job sites. Now I use it for a home dump trailer because I have a bigger dump trailer for the job sites. So anything semi-lightweight is good. It is not good for hauling gravel, not good for hauling dirt, not good for hauling like firewood or logs or anything that's just super heavy, okay? So don't, don't get to thinking that you're gonna go haul like a dump truck, okay? It doesn't do that. <laughs> Some things I really like about this trailer is that it's really small and it's lightweight, so you can tow it behind almost any vehicle, even a small pickup truck like a Ford Ranger, or I bet you could even tow it with a car if you had a hitch on your car. It's narrow and compact, so it's easy to pull into tight spaces. It's easy to turn around. Actually, sometimes too easy. If you've backed up a trailer before, you might know the smaller the trailer, the quicker it turns and the harder it is to back up in a straight line. So that is one downside. Sometimes I worry about things being stolen on the job site, but this is not one of those things that I ever thought someone would steal because it's so ugly. I thought nobody in the world would ever take this thing. Now this thing, dude, I don't know. I don't want to break off the glass. <laughs> Whoops.
Next up, let me show you how I built it and I'm gonna show you how it all works. A project like this does require welding, so if you have some welding skills, that'd be a great way to utilize it. If you don't, find a buddy that can weld. Pay him 20 bucks, max. <laughs> In order to make this thing work, and I designed this on the fly with no drawings, I just started building it. I used inch and a half square tubing. This is one eighth thick wall, so it's light duty tubing. And I welded vertical pieces here at the back of the trailer to start with. You can see I welded it here and here. Now this is a pretty short little section um, to give this vertical piece strength. But really once they're all connected, there's I welded four, one on every corner together first and then connected the top with these other three pieces that's kind of what gives it its strength now look at this though it's not super strong all right so you can't fill it with boulders and expect it not to like blow apart Keep in mind, this is a light duty dump trailer. It has no brakes, a single axle, but I did get a little bit heavy duty tires put on it instead of the standard trailer tires. This trailer came with a ramp that folded down like this. And so I had to cut the hinges off. I reused them, welded them to the side of the ramp to make my door. Now I thought that the expanded metal wouldn't be a great surface for the inside. So I screwed this street sign. Uh, this one, I don't know where I got it, but I don't think you're supposed to get street signs from the side of the road anymore. <laughs> Since this piece of upright right here was too far forward to actually weld the hinges to it, I added a big piece of plate with a little tiny brace to extend the position where I could actually locate the hinge so it would be in the right location and close properly. We welded on some chain links here just to have something to hook a strap to in case something was sticking out high or I needed to contain something that could blow away. We're gonna raise the dump bed part up here and show you how it works really, but the next part to build was this wooden box. So you need to understand the idea that we have a metal frame that is stationary, that's attached to the trailer, and then there's a wooden box that goes up and down inside of it. And actually it's important that the metal frame supports this wooden box as it's sliding up and down. And you can see actually there's like an arc right here. And the box itself has nothing to hold the sidewalls from spreading, except for the fact that it's inside this cage. And it still is doing that job for it while it's being dumped. So that's really critical to this design. I think Advantec subfloor is the best material. It's relatively lightweight and it can withstand the weather for a long time. I even coated the top edge with Lexel, you can see right here, that will help water from penetrating the edge and it'll just make it last longer. The floor of the box here is just pressure treated two by tens. I've replaced them one time in about five years. I just took some two inch by two inch angle iron approximately and screwed through with really long lag screws. These are probably six inch long screws that screw into the end grain of the wood. Now that's not the best attachment in my mind, but it has worked pretty well. And it's just really important that these are really centered in the edge of the two by 10 and that they're really long screws and that I pre-drilled for them so that they don't split the wood. Because this is actually what's holding all the pressure when it's dumping and, and it's got a lot of weight in it. There are a couple of hinges right here. So the box that we're talking about actually hinges from the very back of the trailer. And I found out after a couple of years of use, the back of the trailer was getting bent a little bit because all the load gets tipped on it and all the weight gets applied to this back piece of framing on the trailer. And it wasn't really strong enough. So I had to go in and add some more supports underneath after I had already abused it a couple times. I think the most tricky part of doing this build was making this arm the right length and the right angle to lift the box high enough and be able to have enough strength to not like bend and break. Okay, so I didn't do any fancy math or any math at all. I didn't even measure this piece. I just like had a piece about the right length and I did this in one shot. I literally like laid it across here and I like thought it looked about right and it just worked, okay? So I didn't do any trigonometry or anything. Um, also, this piece of metal really strengthens the tongue. If you look down here, I've got it welded to the tongue because this piece didn't look very strong if I was gonna load this thing down heavy. It's just bolted on right here at the front and it doesn't extend very far underneath 
the bottom of the trailer. So this big triangle that I've made by connecting this angled support to the frame of the trailer and to the tongue has just made this really strong in the front, which I really like if I'm gonna load it down heavy. At the very top, there is a wheel that is a swiveling caster. This was a wheel that I found at a junkyard that a friend of mine owns, and he actually machined the rubber part of the tire to be flat because it was crowned. If you ever look at those, that's the way they are. I paid $20 for this, and then I welded it so it can't swivel anymore, and I tack welded it to the end. You can see I have some little side braces here that help keep this strap from running off the side of it because that would be a huge risk if you didn't have any way to contain the strap. I actually just tack welded these on to test it and it worked and then I never even finished welding them. <laughs> Let's go ahead and measure this thing because I've never measured it before. It looks to me like this sticks up about almost three feet. We'll call it three feet and it sticks into the back of the trailer. Oh, I don't know, approximately 20 inches. Maybe two feet, nah, not quite, 22. I'm using a cheap boat winch right here from a boat trailer. This was maybe 50 bucks or something. It can hold 1,500 pounds. I actually have found that this trailer can dump only 1,500 pounds max. And the way that I think about it is that if this is lifting the front half, then it's only carrying half of the load of the 1,500 pound maximum load that I think this thing can carry. And the reason that I know the weight is because when I go to the recycle center, they weigh you in on a giant scale and then you dump the trash out and then they weigh you again and you know how much weight the trash was because that's how they charge you. So I think that about a thousand pounds is a safe, like usable number for the amount of weight. The load that we dumped today with the metal, with the tub in it and everything, I don't know, maybe only five or 600 pounds worth of stuff. Was it hard to crank up there, Brett? No, he says no, it was easy. Sometimes I have loaded it so heavy that I'm cranking this thing with all my strength and I'm thinking, man, something might go bad here and break. I would say about a thousand pounds is kind of the max safe operating load of this trailer given the tires and the style of the winch and the strap. This strap right here you can see is weathered and it's the second strap I've used. Eventually the weather will kill this strap and it will break. Um, there's no safety mechanism built into this thing if the box was gonna drop. So I am always super cautious to keep my hands out of the way just in case this thing came down. You definitely don't ever want to put yourself underneath the raised bed. That is the most dangerous place to be. Even trailers that are built by the factory will have stickers all over. I'm telling you to never do that. So I'm always cautious not to do that. One really important thing is that I nailed the Avantech to the side of the two by 10 that's on each side. You can see right here, I got some three inch galvanized gun nails that I shot in. That's how this piece is attached to the actual bottom side of the trailer. I've got a piece of two by two angle iron right here that you can see that's holding the front together. That's how all the ends of the boards are held together and that's it. There's nothing else to it. I could probably put some more screws or bolts in it. And if anybody else does this, they could probably make improvements on this design, which I would actually recommend, but this is holding together. I didn't ever really have a goal for how high this should go exactly. I just thought I wanted it to raise up enough where I thought stuff would slide out. I've always thought it's been about 45 degrees, but now that I'm looking at it with a square, it actually doesn't even quite tip to 45. Maybe it's only 40 degrees. Let's see, can I figure this out real quick? If I get there and pivot and line it up, it is, yeah, 40 degrees. It's on 50, but we're doing the opposite of that. So this only raises to 40 degrees and it has been high enough to dump really anything out of it. This thing will hold its position when it's raised up like this because the winch has a lock mechanism. To get it to come down, you just flip the little switch and run the winch in reverse. Now there's no brakes on this thing to keep it from falling down. You literally are holding it with your hand on the crank, but the way that this thing is geared, it's actually not hard at all because half of this bed is all you're holding with the strap and it's really not that heavy.
In order to keep this door from sagging while I'm riding down the road, I put this little ledge right here. It's just a piece of angle iron with a hole drilled in it that helps me pin this thing so that the bottom doesn't kick out when I get a load of trash in here. And then to hold the top together, I put another piece of plate steel with a matching piece and a little notch here so that these can interlock together and the door can actually hold the sidewalls from spreading while the door is closed and while it's loaded. Thanks for watching. I hope it's been helpful for you. Maybe you can build an even better dump trailer than I did. So good luck with your build.